Well, welcome to part 17 of the XC restoration. Again, not an awful lot's been done because I am waiting for a few parts and I'm feeling a little bit poor at the moment. So I've got a few bits and pieces done. I've stuck the rear axle in. That was my foot on the tire behind me. It wasn't what you think it was. I've put the rear axle in. There's a few bits and pieces I still have to do with that. Um, dashboard stuff's finalized. There are, <laughs> there are a few more bits to do with that too. Uh, and I also picked up this XD dashboard for $1. So I actually just bought that with a couple of XC parts from um, from a bloke and needed it for the for the lens because it's better than the one in my car. So I'm waiting on a few parts and then we can sort of start putting front end stuff in and other bits and pieces too. So something rubbing on the shed, a tree. So this is part seven. Hope you enjoy it. And it goes for about 40 minutes. So the next one should be out in about a fortnight or three weeks, something like that. Anyway, this is part 17. And the first thing I want to do is uh, give a heartfelt thanks to Neil Bryce in New Zealand. He's donated this uh, new dash, um, what do you call it, circuitry. And you can see the way he's packaged it, it's absolutely brilliant. So I'm just going to open that very carefully. I mean, he really does take a lot of pride in what he does. And I've got a, I've got a fact sheet that he sort of sent me that refers to the process of making these things and it's hours and hours and hours of work because when he scans the original it's not really up to speed um, with regard to the quality he's after so he spends a lot of time retracing the tracks on the um, on the circuitry and comes up with an absolutely stunning result which is here and you can see that he's even got new little clips and there's the work there and it is absolutely divine and it's made on I think it's 0.15 millimeter fiberglass so and also it's much better protected than what the original is so you can just see how exquisite that piece of work is now that's hundred and fifty dollars he advertises them on eBay and there's there's no better product and I don't even think there's another product available. And he includes all the pinouts. I mean, the, the problem with buying remanufactured parts is you don't get instructions with them. And quite often they're not to this standard. I mean, that really is uh, indicative of the, the fact that he's at the top of his game. So, Neil, thank you very, very much for that. I've made an absolute mess of the one in the car and uh, I know now that it's going to be as good as or if not better than you. Mmm, cup of tea. Well, I've got the uh, radio and everything out but that fan shroud up there, it's got a message, I think it's my daughter. That's an XB, XC one. Either XB or XC, I think they're different but that's a Commodore clutch fan but I need to get that out. I might have to undo all this to get that stuff out. I put this here, I screwed up against the wall and built this thing. It's got a lot of weight on it, I don't want to weaken this, but I can't get to the top screw where I mounted the shroud. So I've just done it the lazy way. Because before I get the car out, I want to get this out. I don't know which car this was off. Oh, actually it might be an XC one because it's got that, that thing there. Oh wow, look at that. That is so freaking cool. Excellent, I can use that. Although, it looks as though it might have... I'll put the clips down the bottom. Oh, that's mad. Wow. Cool. I'm happy. <laughs> I got myself a shroud. I thought it might be too narrow. I'm just going to see if the radiator is too narrow for the car. Well, it's time to pop this axle in. I haven't changed the bearings and seals in the ends yet, or the bear, axle seals and bearings, because it's going to be easier in the car to do that. Got our springs with a couple of new bushes in, new bolts, the front spring mounting bolts, the shackles, new, um, I don't know what you call those, they're the big bushes that go sort of here that 
is trapped in by these little guys down here. Um, I knew what they were, but I'm thinking of other things at the moment, so I can't remember. And of course, the shackle bush is there. Um, this car is a little bit GT. Look at that. Wow. I think they're all a bit like that. So uh, we'll get busy and we'll start putting that in now. I'm going to flick this over. And it's going to want to sort of fall back so because of the weight of this. So I'm going to need to put a bit of wood under there. And I'll just get a large screwdriver and cable tie it over. Like that. And just... This is only while I put one spring on. Once one spring's on, um, it'll hold. The weight of the spring will hold it where I want it to put the other spring on. Oops, I've done that too much. Um, and that'll hold it there so we can just drag the springs over and we're good to go. Right, well, there's already an issue. We've got these handbrake brackets here. And if I put this one correct way, that's going to interfere because that's the original XC type. Now I'm not going to take those off, I'm going to leave them there because eventually I will get a 9 inch rear axle. So I might have to put these like that, which is less than ideal, I think. I can put it like that. That might be problematic. Even there it might get in the way. I'm not really sure what to do with that. I might try that actually. What if I go that way? I think it's still going to interfere. So your handbrake cable comes in from here. Um, that's going to get in the way as well. So the only way to put it really is on that side. So that when your lever comes in, it's not great by any stretch, but it looks like the only option I've got for now. This guy had these the other way around before. So we'll just have to think about this too because it's when you hit it upside down it sort of I don't know, it's, a, it's all about the face, so you gotta sort of think about how it goes. Here we go. We're just gonna make sure these U bolts stay in perfect or perfectly parallel when we tighten them up. I'm not gonna tighten them fully because there might be a little bit of movement when I put it in, it might be a bit like that, so I need to be careful of that. Okay. We just have to, when we tighten them, just, as I said, sort of keep an eye on these to make sure they're parallel. Oops. And they pull down straight. Still not ready to... I'll just take that up a bit more. They sort of true up as you tighten them. Whoa. I'm using rubbish tools. And, um, yeah, that's how they, gosh, that's how they, um, I'm just sort of hitting them, <coughs> hitting them every now and then just to stop them from splaying or staying splayed. Just make sure they're nice and parallel. Take it up a little bit. I'm just doing it with my foot while I lie here. I'm sort of lying next to the camera, and then sort of wiggle it in. There we go. And I just want to hold that there with a screwdriver and dang that in from the other side before I put the bolt in. I could probably even get the bolt in there, but 
I'll just put that in for now just to hold it there and I'll do the other side put the bolt in from the other side then of course it's all going to be stable then I'm just using a little baby 3 8 drive ratchet just to take the slack out of the bolt. I'm not going to tighten it yet because I want to um, sort of put the rear shackles on, jack the car up with the weight of the car, then I'll, I'll tighten these up. And of course now we can just sort of jack it up, put the shackles on, it'll stay in one spot. I'm not worried about putting any of these uh, brake fittings or anything on, they can go on in the car if you know what I mean because then I can sort of do it without the fuel tank in, I've got very easy access, so none of that matters terribly much. Yeah. Let's put these in the springs, these are the bushes. Put one in that side. Right, so these ones have to go in like that. I'm just going to pull the spring over a little bit. There we go. And that one's going to have to go sort of up there. This is where I have to sort of yank on it a bit. All my big multis and there we go. I'm just holding that with them. And I can stick these nuts on and sort of tighten them up. That's just what I've done there. Just so I can get those nuts and I'm just holding I'm not holding it hard with these uh, multis, but just enough to sort of retain it. I can take them off now. And you can see we can get to the nuts. And it also means that, as I said before, this side can be taken out with the fuel tank in place. Because that's low enough to sort of, this one here is low enough to swing down and remove. And so there it is all in. Um, all sort of rebushed and looking good. It just means I can now put sort of wheels on the back of it and move it around. It's not sort of stuck on jack stones anymore. But um, the car is getting there. The car is getting there. It's just taking a little bit longer than I would have liked. Well, I don't want to go on about the clock too much because I've already sort of gone into some detail about how I've tried to resurrect this lens. Um, and this, I've taken this off again, off the front of the clock. It just screws in with four little, or attaches with four little slotted screws. And I'm only taking it off just so I can push it out from behind. And that's all we need to do. And of course, I've bought a new lens for it. And these run in at around $30. And they're supposed to be good for next A, B, C. It's got glad wrap around it. It's going to be hard to get that off. Um, and of course, the thing that worried me a little bit was I didn't know if X, A, B ones would fit next C. Um, but also how this knob came off. And I've had a good look at it. It's got a spring at the front with a knurled sort of nut. So you can push it in and that slotted uh, arrangement there will adjust the time. Now these are an interference fit and they just pull off. And there's of course that conical spring and the button will withdraw or the adjuster will withdraw and leaves you with the lens. Now, whoops, sorry I kicked the camera. When I figure out how, oh here we go, I've got it I think. When I figure out how to get this unwrapped, oh it's truth, it's all over the back again. Then at least um, I'm going to be in sort of some better position as to figure out if I've got exactly the same products, but I'm having god awful trouble getting this out and I don't want to scratch it. I'm just going to turn the camera off and do this. And that film is stuck pretty well. I don't know how long it's been wrapped up in there. It's chances are it's been wrapped up in there for a while. And so we've got the front and the back. Oh! and um, it's going to be a much much nicer look so in order to affect that we just put it in it's just purely an interference fit conical spring and adjuster and we'll push that on one bloke suggested um, heating it with a soldering iron there we go and there it is pretty much done and dusted so that would just sit in there and it's precisely the right fit and of course well once we put it together we're going to have a clock that we can actually see and adjust the hands isn't that nice 
and it's worth it you know i mean i tried to toil away with this and sand it and buff it and all this sort of stuff but i think the plastic's actually compromised inside it's actually had it so we can't do much with that but that is for the sake of 30 odd dollars a terrific look very happy so i'll just put a little spot of adhesive in each corner and i reckon that will be sorted Right, well, I've taken the old printed circuit off the dashes. This is the one that I damaged. There was also other damage on it. And uh, as I said, Neil um, Bryce in New Zealand was very kind in, in donating this one to my car, which I thought was just an amazing gesture. And he said a bit of information on how these things are made. And of course, it is an absolute work of art how he's done it. Now, I'm going to try and sort of read this as I'm doing it and explain a little bit about it. And of course the process starts with scanning the original um, and then he has to sort of draw over the original um, scan using drawing software to trace all the curves and lines and all that sort of stuff which takes many hours. Um, now the first one he did wasn't good enough so he ended up spending about 20 hours to get it right and then there's about another 20 translating the vector drawing onto a printed circuit board software so there's an awful lot of work goes just into the preparation of doing these things. Now there are three layers, there's the bottom layer, um, which I'm not sure if that's the bottom or that's the bottom, I'm not terribly sure. Um, a routing layer which includes all the holes and cutouts and the middle layer which is the copper layer where all the traces and um, text and so forth is put on, so all that writing and that sort of thing I think. Now this one's a little bit different, this is silver plated, um, it's something new, he's left them normally, the original ones in plain copper. Um, and he's done a few in these and he reckons they look a bit better and they're a bit more resilient so only he would know that um, and I'm sure judging by the quality of this as opposed to the original he's right on the money so he has a mech sample I'm not sure, really sure I suppose that's like a, a draft sample done um, which is on the 0.15 millimeter fiberglass sheet um, and that's a router cut he then trial fits them da -da -da. okay so the copper is bonded to the fiberglass substrate a lot better than what the original is and I've seen when mine heated up it just all sort of lifted not that they should be heating up anyway and the manufacturer uses is a New Zealand manufacturer we tried a Chinese one tried sorry a Chinese manufacturer and it wasn't nearly as good so he's stuck with the local one in New Zealand which turns out the, the work is far better um, and that's why they can cost a little bit to get done and these were $150 which is actually very very cheap for what you're getting now He's done, he has these available for ZZ and ZD Fairlanes, XA and XB, GS and GT Falcons, ZF and ZG Fairlanes, XC, GS and GXL Fairmonts and Falcons, ZH Fairlanes and P6 LTDs, and he also has one for the HK Holden as well. Now if you need to buy one of these, he is under the eBay username of Neil with two L's, N-E-I-L-L, -L, 1970, one word, and on the Australian Ford Forum is Neil NZ. And so that's Neil Bryce. I did a lot of work with him. Um, when I rewired my cluster plug for the um, to suit the Falcon because the Fairlane wiring was all different. Now it's worth noting when we put these on, some of these posts have insulators that go over them. So once you put your nuts on, you have to put these little plastic insulators over there because these are protruding somewhat and that'll stop them sort of short circuiting against anything else. And so we need to put all these on as best we can. And we can now start to sort of attach it now. I'm just going to loosely do it from there and I'm not going to tighten it very much, just a little bit. Just to snug it down a little tiny bit. I don't want it tight. And you can see how well that all lines up. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll turn the camera back on and talk a bit more, I guess. Some of the posts are very short, like these ones. They don't have an insulator on them. These ones do, and these ones down here do. And he even includes in the kit, he even includes somewhere um, these little guys here. And these are just locating clips that go, one I think goes here and the other one's down yonder there. So those two holes there are for these two clips to push in and that'll hold that in the right orientation for the plug when you put the plug on. A 
Look at this. It is an absolute work of art, and I am sick and tired of buying reproduction parts that either don't fit or fit poorly. And the other thing is they never, I think I mentioned in the intro, they never ever come with fitting instructions. And I've actually ruined one or two parts in, the, in previous years, particularly on this XW I'm leaning against now, um, fitting things incorrectly because they didn't have any paraphernalia with them, which is really, really disconcerting. All right, so we can push these in. Once it's all located, and then just clip on like that. And we can put the little tack one on now. These are brass as well. And by mine canvas with Neil, um, online or sort of over email, we're with wiring pinouts for the Fairlane dash, or for the Fairlane wiring loom I was using, I came to understand very quickly that he doesn't miss a trick. He's absolutely on the board, which is what you need when people are doing kit like this. I mean, that is an absolute work of art. Just double check there, nice and snug down. I'm just not putting much pressure on that at all. Just a little bit, and you can see there, it is absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that lovely? So I'll put that back in the car now, and I'll test it out. Well, I can't finish putting the dash together because I need another one of these. I don't want to run controls, I want a blank one. People seem to get $150 for those in, uh, in undrilled condition, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm stuck some wheels on the back so I can move the car around now. Uh, I'm going to start colour sanding and buffing reasonably soon too. And that all looks, well, the light's terrible, but you get the gist of it. Um, what else is there? What else is there? Not much, because I did a lot of work on that junkyard engine. But uh, I do have... The cluster facing in. Oh, there you go. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful. And of course, you know, got the. Yeah, where are we? Got the indicator switch on and all that stuff. Right, picked up this uh, inlet manifold with carburetor for $30. And here's the carburetor here that it came with. So there's two thermoquads I've got. I didn't really want that manifold because I've already got one in slightly better condition. Although that manifold is a cast iron one and it doesn't have the restrictors cast into the secondaries. Now, here are the two thermoquads. This one, although it's dirty and dusty, is in far better condition than this because this one here is ingested water. You can see on the choke housing it's oxidized. But also in the primary venturi, it's a bit knackered as well. So water has got in there. This is in far better condition, um, although it is uh, it is damaged here on the breather. Now, and this one's missing as a matter of fact, I didn't even notice that before, but we can probably get, that just looks like 5 16th tube. Now they're identical, right? It's just a matter of some of the little uptakes at the front are different, but at the end of the day they're fairly well the same carburetor. Um, it's just down to allocation basically at the factory and also jetting is going to be different between them. But I want to overhaul both of them because I want one for my junkyard engine which I'm going to eventually sort of do up and I want a thermocord on that and I also want one for this XC. So I'll use the this one for the XC, I'll recondition it all. If I need to raid parts, I'll raid parts um, and this can come later. But at the end of the day they were both quite cheap. This one was eighty dollars, I think, from Ray. Where this one with the manifold was thirty. Um, and of course, as I said, I don't want the manifold, but at least I have a choice of carburetors. And I can also, um, I've got all this stuff for when I need it, if you know what I mean. I've got it all sort of sitting there. The other things I picked up from the same seller in Pasco Vale was this dash for NXD, which was one dollar. Um, I bought it for the. For the lens it's in very good condition it's in better condition than the one in my car that got scratched pretty badly and all these things here and these are the a pillar trims and these aren't in terrific condition but there's enough there to make two good ones uh, another one of these which is good uh, although this is a driver side one the passenger side one of mine's cracked the driver side's in good nick so i've got two good ones of those and of course the dash speaker grills which are both knackered so i might even uh, be able to perfectly uh, round that off and sort of plastic weld a round sort of piece in there so it shouldn't be very obvious. I'll cross that bridge later, I'm not even worried about that. But they were a dollar, that XD dash cluster was a dollar and the carburetor was 30. So I've been going fairly slowly on this car because I do need to spend some money now and I haven't got it. 
Uh, I need a pair of control arms for the front, or a set of control arms for the front. They're about $500, and some uh, front springs. Then, of course, we need to... Um, uh, what do we need to do? We need to overhaul all the brake calipers, get the brake lines in, all that sort of stuff. So there's a bit of expense coming up, which is why I've been sort of slack on it, because basically I'm a bit poor at the moment. But So when these sorts of things take place... Um, you know, it does slow you down a little bit, although it's June, it's late June, in the spring I'll get these doors out, I've got them under the house now and I'll strip them back to bare metal and I'll paint those and put them on um, the front ones might need a bit of welding doing to them, the back ones from what I've seen look absolutely immaculate so once it's got doors on, um, I can have glass put in and you know, I can start on the interior but once all that sort of starts coming to fruition, well then it's going to be um, it's going to be much better and move ahead a bit quicker. Um, I'm in two minds about my engine block. This is my 351 engine block. It looks like I can just rough, um, it looks like I can just hone it and re-ring it. I'm not sure I want to do that. I've been in touch with Auger Engines in Bayswater about getting it reconditioned or getting some machine work done on it. Um, of course, a, a machined block is about $1,400. So by the time you... Um, Reface the, the decks in line or square with the center line of the crank. Uh, rebore. I don't want to go anything more than about 20 if I have to rebore it at all. Cam bearings and all this sort of stuff. It does start adding up with hot tanking. Um, I also want to get it um, sonic tested too to see what it's like. So that's another thing that's very expensive and the reason I haven't tackled it yet. Now the thermoquads are a bit of an ugly duckling but I want to use one because I want to keep the factory uh, emissions all there and sort of looking good. Now, I've just got to try and remember these numbers because I can't see in this light. This one here is a 9085S, which is a 5.8 automatic XC. And the um, the other one, I'm not sure what that's of. This is a 9146. Now, I think a 9144 is an XD 4.9 auto. I can look at mine on the other XD and see what it is, but I'm going to use this in the XC it's sort of correct for it. This is a manual car, but it doesn't matter that much. I can rejet it. The autos and manuals, I think, have different jetting in them. And so I can use different metering rods and jets. You can get all these from the United States sent out, because don't forget, Chrysler use these carburetors on their small and their big block engines. 440s had them and all that sort of stuff. So they're a ripper carburetor. They don't look very attractive, but they do flow to 800 CFM. The uh, big block Chrysler ones had bigger primary Ventura, though. But whatever the case, these are going to really, really uh, go well. Now, this one I'm going to do up, and I'm thinking about that junk out engine. I might put it on that. Now, it's a, a bit of a... I'm in, I'm in two minds. I'm in a position now where I'm going to have to either keep the cars I've got, or if I want more, I'm going to have to sell, because I haven't got any real estate uh, left, or any room left, to uh, collect any more cars. And... I'll tell you now, I'm not selling these two. These are here to stay and there's no way in a pink fit I'm selling the XD either. And I don't want to get rid of my English cars either. So it looks like I'm stuck with these cars, which is fine by me. Now, the engine on the XD is tired, but it still runs well. So I'm inclined to leave it for now. But if I do need to, um, to do it up, I'm not going to have room to have another dead car lying around. So I'm thinking I might do this one up for it. Swap them over one weekend, one Saturday or something. But if this needs boring... I'm inclined to use the extra real estate um, in terms of stroke and stroke it up a bit. Um, I want a nice standard looking and running engine, uh, but with a lot more power. So I can stroke that. It's a project for the future. It's certainly not yet, but uh, it is worthy of consideration. I don't really want to do that to the original block. I want to leave it. So uh, that's something that I can look at later on. Righty, I've got the handbrake in bits here. And I've given this a quick lick of paint because it was all sort of mangy and manky down the bottom, but... I haven't painted up here because it still has its production date on, which looks like the 20th of August 1977. This is the original handbrake out of the car. It was sort of loosely flapping around in there. Now these have a spring type arrangement down the bottom. You can see that in there. And it's wound in a certain way. It's quite easy to, to, to do. You can take them out quite easily. I've elected not to. And of course we need to pull it up past its little threshold right at the top there and then we can sort of stick this in but I'm going to go and grease this up first. Right well we don't need copious amounts on there I've just got a little bit and I cleaned it up with um, scotch brite just to get any little bits of surface rust off. It is hardened steel so I'm just going to pull that shoe up again 
and just feed it in like that. So there we go there. Now to put the cable on we need to turn it upside down like that so we can access that hole there. So I'll just go and get the cable. So that's a nice free cable, it's working well. So I'm just going to plop it up through here. Oops, through that hole and through here and oh come on. Here we go. And I can just feed it into that hole there. Just push it in. So we need to put we can turn it around and then we can put this pin in and that's got a fluted sort of shaft on it. It's a hardened steel thing and that just knocks in. I'm not supposed to use side cutters, I go and do that on the bench. And then we can just put this wheel in. And there's a little clever pin that goes through. Now, being the clever bloke that I am, I can get this in. Gee, this is better. There we go. Being the clever bloke that I am, I actually lost the, the um, pin for it. So you can use a split pin. It doesn't look as good as the original pin. But these are hardened so it's perfectly safe to use. It just means that it's dead obvious that someone's been mucking around with this car by not putting the original part on. And I think that's going to be fairly obvious anyway because this is on YouTube and everyone's going to know about it. Just feed the cable up, and there's another clip that goes on behind here, which is this little guy. And we push that in, and of course, lastly, we can just put the um, handbrake light switch on, and that's just a little simple thing that runs off that um, dowel there and turns the handbrake light on and off, which just sits open. It had a, a remnant somewhere, I think it's here, of a bullet terminal in it. And I've committed the ultimate sin and crimped another one on. I didn't solder it. Um, because it doesn't matter. This really isn't important because if it um, comes off or short, which is very unlikely anyway, all it'll do is turn the handbrake light on. So it really doesn't matter at all. So I can just tighten this up. And then put this thing in the car. Oh, it's the socket. So it's a very cheap thing, or a very easy thing I should say to fix this. The XW's was hard because all the plastic needed redoing and had to paint it and all this sort of stuff. This is a soft feel sort of handle which you can't paint. Or at least you wouldn't bother painting it. And um, I'm being very gentle with this because I don't want to scratch the car underneath it. It's sitting on a folded over Duna cover. Uh oh, here we go. These are metric. But um, look, getting off that for a moment. The, um, you can get a better result by buying all new parts and I've had to use some of the old parts in this car which I've sort of cleaned up um, but the problem I have are people that ask stupid amounts of money for some of these parts that they're trying to pedal and I refuse to pay it so in some instances I'll put parts on that aren't uh, you know 100% as long as they function 100% if they don't look 100% I don't care until I find those right parts and I'm looking for tail lights at the moment um, there's lots of station wagon ones advertised online. There's no sedan ones that you can find. And also the clocks around that has holes around it for a fader and electric aerial. And I'm not going to put either of those in, I don't think. I just want a bare one. And the last one I saw went for $160. So I'm sort of waiting at the moment. But I've known people selling parts for these old cars. And they're not even car enthusiasts. A lot of them are just um, out to make a quid. So I've got to find some 8 by one25 metrics for that. I'll have a look. They're not metric, they must be 516 fine. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. 516 fine threads. Alright, then, so, I'll put them on. I'll put that on, I should say. Get a couple of those. Alright. Now, it was. I was told that the Fairlane. Um, dash was different in where the handbrake was mounted the Fairlane has a, a, um, a hand release one like a button release and a pedal but it was just a bracket there I took off the screws weren't long enough the retaining hardware wasn't long enough so I've used longer ones but all things considered it seems to be um, fitting quite well that's cool I'll be happy with that
I've already tightened the uh, ones on the firewall. You tighten those first to pull it against the firewall, then you nip these up and you're good to go. Right, well, I've fitted much of the dash out now. This is no good. I mentioned this before. It's got the holes. Don't want the holes. Want a nice one, a nice new one, or at least one that has been drilled. Um, got the wheel on, got the column in, got the indicator switch on. I've got an idea to reco that. I'll talk about that later. I'm just going to um, just do a bit of testing. So I'll turn the ignition switch on. Just want to see if the handbrake light's working. Yep. Beautiful. So if I go right. Not cancelling very well. I'll try that again. I haven't got the wheel tightened up here. Yeah, not very good. That's cancelling. Dash lights are working. Clock lights working. Okay, all looking good. So far, so good. Might have to change that switch over. I haven't got the wheel. The wheel's all loose. There's no stupid birds. Wheel's all loose, but it doesn't matter for now. Um, the rest of it's looking pretty good. So it doesn't matter that I've got to pull some of it apart again. It's more a tentative fit out than anything else to see what fasteners I needed, what I had, what I didn't have, that sort of thing. Don't forget this car was a bare shell when I bought it, so I've made it up out of all these spare parts and, and bits and pieces like that. So that's the reason why it's together, but some of it has to come apart again. I won't show putting it apart again. I've already sort of shown much of that, but that's the reason behind it. Well, I've got my manky old... $10 seat from that bloke in um, Pasco Vale. And Jason's got the interior. This is just a seat, a front seat sort of left over. And I'm not even fitting on very well. But I'm going to put it on, or put it in the car as a temporary thing, just to see what works involved in putting the electric seat bases in, or indeed whether I want them in the first place. So I'm just going to put a dummy seat in, see how it sits, bearing in mind the new interior will be re-padded, although well, the seats will be re-padded, but um, I'm sort of leaning towards changing my mind again and not wanting to do it. I'm, I'm sort of thinking maybe just a nice stock Falcon. I've always preferred stock over custom and modified, but look, we'll, we'll just suck it and see, see how it pans out and whether or not we want to bother with them, but um, I'll just sort of put these sheepskins over I'll do the same to the squab and I'll sort of reassemble it. Check this out, it's um, I'm shearing sheep here. Rotten sheepskin, I'll probably stick all over my back when I sit in it, but I might put a garbage bag or something over it. This really does look a bit second rate, but as far as these electric seat bases are concerned, they're awfully heavy and I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm just not sure I want them now. I've sort of back flipped on everything on this car. I've not done what I said I'd first do with it. But you know what? It's your prerogative to do that with an old car. You can sort of set them up the way you want. But the more I put this together, the more I want it to look sort of stock, factory stock, if you know what I mean, without it being, even though it's not a proper original colour, I don't really care about that because I think the creamy white sort of is really age appropriate for an old classic. But I'm sort of chasing the classic look with it. Not so much the um, custom look, or at least I don't want it modified. Well, this is the left hand seat, the runners are the other way around, the adjusters here instead of on the other side, and so forth. But it is comfortable. And look, this is a sacked out old seat. It's rattling because I haven't got the steering column in yet, or this isn't tightened up. I've got great visibility, a bit of headroom. I suppose with re padded seats, it's going to be a bit higher again, and I wouldn't want it any higher than that. So I'm actually really happy with the way it is. That's cool. So I'm not going to use the electric seat. That's just all there is to it. I'm going to stay with the normal adjusted ones. You can hear it ticking. Well, that's all I've got for you in this one. Um, I'm sitting in the car for the first time. It's been a long time since I've sat in an XC Falcon. But that's it for this one. Part 18 should be out reasonably soon. And of course, in that, we'll look at a bit of front suspension stuff, or no, well, steering box, that sort of stuff. And ugh, I don't know, I might even color sand it soon. I'm getting bored. I need to save up some money to get some real parts. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Drive safely, enjoy classic, and I'll see you later. Ta da!